Okay, journals, meaningful books from your premarital counseling, <laughs> textbooks from when you were studying the Bible or something else. Yeah. The minimal mom is here. <laughs> what do we do? Okay, seriously, okay. what do we do? Okay, let's. <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, no. First, I have a present for you. Oh, okay. Okay. I am talking oh, about. Yeah. On Saturday, I am talking about how these beans during Lent yep. become these beans. Actually, these are mini Cadbury eggs. Yeah, those okay. are the best. Yeah. So on Saturday, you'll see I feature a few different treats <laughs> in the video. <laughs> these might be the only ones that made it um, <laughs> past the video. They, others have been consumed, um, but I know you love these. I do. I almost ate these before <laughs> you got here. <laughs> Take them now. Thanks. Happy Easter. All right. On Saturday, we're going to talk about just some fun Lent, like new traditions or things mm -hmm. to help remind you of the meaning of the season. Yeah. So that's coming up. It's kind of fun. Okay. But <laughs> that's Saturday. Today, okay. I mean journals. Yeah. Journals. Mm -hmm. Journal. Like, okay, has, I don't know, we don't have any like meaningful journals from like a grandma, but no, I feel like you've people. heard of people who get someone's journal and it's from mm -hmm. the turn of the century and they're recording these amazing things that were yeah. happening and so this is valuable this is this is life this is meaningful moments this might be like sermon notes or mm -hmm. uh like a revelation the lord gave to you or maybe a moment where he said do this don't do this Done. yeah what do we do with it all right so let's play two truths and a lie have you played that okay. game before yeah it's kind of fun right? i know everything about you Okay, this okay. is good. It's okay. kind of for all of us. Oh, I okay. see. Okay, so not just you specifically. Guys. So we have gone to women's conferences, church services, other conferences, and had really revelatory moments. And I mean, uh, we've learned things that have impacted us, and we usually write them down somewhere, yeah. right? Yes. So we have, so truth number one, we do have notes and journals and notebooks of truly meaningful, meaningful. things in mm -hmm. our life. Okay. Number two, anytime we have too much inventory anywhere in our life, it's no longer an asset, it's a burden. Yeah. Okay, so that's number two. That's number true. three, we will revisit these notes and different things. Often. Or or we will forget everything we ever learned if we don't keep them in a box in our attic. Right. Okay. So that's the lie. The okay, dishonesty, right. can we say lie? Yes. <laughs> the dishonesty is that we're ever actually going to go back and revisit them. It's not often. Right. Yeah. But how do we increase the likelihood that we might yep. comes back to reducing the inventory, okay. right? Because if we have stacks and stacks and stacks of books and Bible studies and journals and yep. notebooks, it, it's overwhelming and we don't go back and revisit them. Right. Um, but if we could pare it down to the most important and a manageable amount and store it in a way that's accessible and meaningful, we're much more likely to go back and revisit them. Okay, so the idea would be take the few items that you've curated. So actually this Well, journal... so let me stop you, Diana. Okay. okay, so now it feels like we're picking favorite children almost a little bit, right? Sure. So we need to have some kind of container, boundary, or limit. So we have this basket here. You could use anything, like a nice box with a lid, um, some kind of basket like this. The idea is we, we have it out somewhere, like a bookshelf or um, somewhere in our bedroom on top of our dresser. We're, we're reminded of it and we are more likely to go through these again. So some it might you might want it to be pretty, but you can use something. Most of us have something around our house. Now, this becomes our container okay. and our limit. And we put our favorites in first, favorites first. So, so like this journal is from when I was dating Princeton um, and discerning marriage. Okay. So there's a lot of, a lot of good stuff in yeah, here. Yeah, so this is a no brainer. <laughs> yeah, this I really do want to keep. And I might look back at someday. Yeah, we'll so this out. would for okay. sure make the cut. And this book was from our premarital counseling. It is really good. Saving your marriage before it starts. Okay. Um, and so we'll probably use it in future premarital counseling when yep. we're, you know, meeting with other young people. Okay. This. This is one of my favorite teaching resources. Okay. So it's a book, Grasping God's Word, a hands-on approach to reading and interpreting and applying the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, so really good, like, information, but it's just presented in an awesome way. And so okay. I was so that's keep a that as clear, well. yes. Too. And I also did a video um, with my other kind of favorite books that have really marked me yeah. throughout. So we can link to that, but also those mm -hmm. books 
um, would go in there or they're actually I just have that shelf reserved in my office yeah and so, they all have to fit on that shelf yeah actual books might go mm -hmm. in there which is yep. fine but for journals notebooks sermon notes again using this and what we have to realize is that often if if you have you know a box or boxes of these notes or stacks of them we look at it and we think they're all super special mm -hmm. but the truth is there are ones that are much more meaningful than others when we start to use this approach. So we pick out the favorites, the most meaningful, and we put those in your container. And then it's easier to let the rest go because I'm curating a special collection that I'm much more likely to go back and revisit again. So I know what you're thinking. What if I just don't know? So I have a, a second step for the people that are like, okay, it. I have boxes there, or yeah. I have shelves or I have backpacks full or whatever it might be. I don't know if I can lift this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so this, look at, you can see the dust on the lid. This yeah. actually has been sitting in our basement yep. as a quarantine bin. Yep. So these are the books. These are actually both mine and Princeton's mm -hmm. together. I inherited some of these that I just didn't know for sure. Yep. Like I just didn't know. And yep. so we went ahead and put them in here. Now that was, oh my goodness, well over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed at the clarity. Yeah. Now, if mm -hmm. I start to look at this, I am just like, oh, I mean, I haven't even thought of this book in a year. I haven't ever thought oh I'd like to reference that mm -hmm. I haven't thought oh I'd you, like to you lend this to there. somebody I forgot yep okay let's just let's just be honest yep and so now honestly to go either like if if there's a book that would make sense for someone you know give it to them or mm -hmm. to donate this yeah feels I am like super unattached now at this point and there's really no question if one of these should make it into my precious container. limited space yeah, yeah. And I don't know about you, Dinah, the other thing I think about too, especially with like journals, conference notes, um, sermons notes, we've got we've gotten to some incredible women's conferences this mm -hmm. year. Yep. And there's there's actually generally only one or two things per conference that I take away as like the main thing. And it almost feels a little bit overwhelming to try and go back and apply all the other things. Cause you know, you'll write notes, you're like, oh, but this is good and this is good. That, that's like almost too much inventory even of good things to try yeah. and to apply to our life. And I think of it kind of like manna, you know, like where we're going to get new stuff. We're going to have more conferences. We're going to have more sermons. We're going to have more women's groups and women's Bible studies. So what do I need for today to sustain my soul and my spiritual faith? It's not a lot, actually. Like, it's low inventory yeah. <laughs> of that kind of stuff. Because what's <laughs> happening, I mean, who can remember going to, like, a conference or event and buying the cassette tape from yes. your favorite speaker? <laughs> that, I can't believe, I mean, that's actually, we did that. Oh, yeah. And I can't believe now we're at a point today because, like, we attended the If Gathering mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. uh, this past week. Uh, within the weekend, the, the link to the entire conference was sent to our email inbox, so we had complete access to it. But then I was on social media and I saw that the speakers had already been posting some of the highlights mm. from their talks. So what's so different about today yeah. is we have so much access. Yep. And so it actually feels like, okay, we need less inputs yep. and we need more room, if anything, for what we are receiving just to settle into mm -hmm. our soul and take root. Absolutely. And so I feel like that's where we're just so much less dependent on mm -hmm. um, books and those types of yeah. things. So, And I think also I'm always aware too of balancing, but how much am I actually reading the Bible, right? And, and still wanting that to be the number one source of inspiration and mm -hmm. you know asking the lord and the holy spirit to guide me and teach me and, and yeah. you know and so it's always that balance as well and so i think that's where we both agree less of this stuff yep less to manage less input um and it, we're not gonna be missing out on anything well and i'm i'm not gonna go grab them now because i'm buried um <laughs> but on my desk i also have a stack of books that I bought because somebody recommended them. Yeah. And you know, then you, you just hop on Amazon quick mm -hmm. and you find it used mm -hmm. for like three bucks yep. and like four bucks shipping. And so mm -hmm. you just buy it because you're like, I don't want to forget about it. That seems so good. Yep. And honestly, with little ones, I'm just not in a book reading phase. Yep. If I'm reading, it's digitally like on a Kindle or on my phone. 
Um, and so I have these books now and I wish I didn't. And now I have that buyer's remorse and guilt that I paid money for these. Yeah. Also, and I oh, then there's this added guilt of I know it's like really good stuff. That, the fear of missing out. Fear of missing yes. out. But mm -hmm. I am going to miss out. And so I've learned to either put those... I have just one piece of hair sticking straight up. Okay, go ahead, please. Sorry. Do you feel better? I do okay. feel better. <laughs> I've learned to just put those on either a list, like a notepad on my phone, yeah. or on a wish list, wish list. on Amazon, Amazon is the other thing totally. to do. And then wait, mm -hmm. and then wait a little longer. Mm -hmm. And then I'm over it, and then I don't yeah. buy it. <laughs> and once in a while I do that, go back and buy those things. Yeah. But then I know I'm making a better, more informed decision. Yeah. All right, so find a container to keep your special stuff. Use a time will tell bin or a quarantine box if you need to. And most importantly, trust that managing low inventory and low inputs in this is gonna actually create the most rich environment for your spiritual growth.